okay, okay, okay. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this platform today. Welcome to Illuminate with Henry live on Facebook. How y'all doing? Hello, Farida. Hello, Zulia. I see you guys. Welcome, 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 welcome. I'm glad, I'm excited that you're on this page right now. Something good, something nice is about to hit you. So just stay tuned and I want you to quickly do something for me, okay? Invite someone. Invite someone right now. Call your friends, call your families, call your loved ones. You can share this on your platform. Let them know that we are live now and I'm about to dish out some good food from the hot pot of grace. All right? Glory, 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 glory. I'm going to start up in a bit. I just want one or two more presents to come on board and then we'll set the ball rolling. Set the ball rolling. Okay, quickly without missing without wasting much of your time i want to officially welcome you again to illuminate with henry live on facebook this is a series that's going to be going on for a season as the lord leads me on this journey so basically i'm going to be teaching about the mystery the mystery of baptism wow the mystery of baptism it's interesting it's a lovely one and you know as the lord began to began to teach me these things in my closet. Abigail, Abigail, how are you doing? Thank you for coming on board. Thank you for coming on board. So like I said, I'm sharing on the mystery of baptism, okay? And this is going to be a series that's going to be going on for a while um, as the Lord begins to help me to bring these deep revelations out to the public, okay? So do me a favor, get your pen, get something to write with. I'm about to tell you something is about to blow your mind, okay? Okay. So I'm teaching on the mystery of baptism. What is baptism? What is baptism? What is baptism? The mystery of baptism. What is baptism? So I'm going to be giving you a few definitions as we progress on this journey. Okay, so stay tuned, put on your seat belt. We're about to cruise cruise in the Holy Ghost, alright? To be baptized means to be completely immersed in something until that which has been immersed has been totally affected by the properties of what it has been immersed into. I'll take that again. To be baptized, okay, is to be completely immersed into something until that which is being immersed has been totally affected by the properties of what it has been immersed into. I'll give you another one. To be baptized means to place something or someone into another with the intentions of altering the natural state of that specimen thereby affecting its visibility, its identity, and its functionality. I'm going to take this again, okay? To be baptized means to place something, okay, or someone into another with an intention to alter the natural state of what you are placing into another. And that thereby affects the visibility of that specimen or the identity of that specimen or the functionality of that specimen or, or, or thing or, or, or person. I'll give you an example. How many of you are like me that maybe once in your life, you know, you're doing something either in the toilet or, 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 or washing a car or washing your clothes 
and your phone, your, 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 your cell phone, falls into a bucket of water. Has it ever happened to you before? And then your, your cell phone falls into a bucket of water. You know what happens? Your phone stops functioning. Okay, yeah, some phones that are not water resistant. Even those phones that are water resistant, hmm? there's, a, there's a depth in the water you can't take that phone to. Because it's going to, the pressure, the pressure in the water is going to affect that phone. And that phone can no longer function how it ought to function because its nature has been affected. This is the same concept of baptism. The intention of baptism is to affect, is to alter, is to change the state of that which is being baptized. So baptism is not complete until there's an alteration. Something must be altered in the process of baptism. Sit tight and join me on this journey as I begin to open you up to realms of revelations by the Spirit of God. I give you another example. If you have a white shirt, for instance, like what I'm putting on right now, okay? The white shirt, and, uh, or this white handkerchief, and you dip it in oil. Those of you in Nigeria, you know what I, I, I mean by palm oil, red oil, okay? You dip this piece of cloth in red oil, okay? You immerse it completely. This stuff will first of all lose its visibility. Meaning it is completely immersed in a bowl of oil. You can no longer see it, okay? Secondly, it loses its identity as a white cloth because it's now going to come out red. And if I was supposed to use this cloth to wipe my face, I cannot use, longer use it to wipe my face because its nature has been altered. So its functionality also has been lost. This is the concept of baptism. Now I'm about to delve into this properly, okay? What is the mystery of baptism? How did baptism come into play? What is the concept about baptism? What is the concept about baptism? John chapter 1 and verse 29. You have your Bibles with you. Turn with me to the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 29. Okay? Are you there, somebody? Are you there, somebody? John, chapter 1 and verse 29. It says, the next day, John, John the Baptist, I'm, I'm talking about right now, saw Jesus coming towards him and said, look, or and that translation says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Verse 30 says, This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. So John is trying to say that he, he, he was pointing to Jesus and telling the people that, Look, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I was talking about when I was explaining to the Pharisees when they came to ask me that who am I. I was explaining to them that there's one, there's someone who is coming after me. Who is greater than I? Watch this. Verse 30. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself, John, did not know him. But the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. So the reason why John the Baptist came for baptizing and immersing people in water is so that the Messiah, Jesus, can be revealed to Israel. The, 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 the concept of baptism by water immersion was given to John as a strategic means of identifying the Messiah among the multitude in Israel. Reason being that it was not going to be be, be easy for John to identify the Messiah by physical means or by fleshy means because the concept of the Messiah is a mystery. John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. If you go down to John chapter 1 verse 14, it says the Word became flesh 
and dwelt amongst us. So it was going to be it was going to be impossible for John the Baptist to identify the man who is not born from the seed of Adam, the man who was conceived from the seed of God. It was going to be difficult for John to identify him. That was why the concept of baptism was given to John, that as he goes on baptizing men, as he begins to dip them into water, one after the other, after one after the other, there will be a particular man that he will see the Spirit of God descend on him. The moment that happens, John, that is the Messiah who you are supposed to reveal to Israel. So John was now explaining to the public. He said, I myself did not, did not know him. I didn't know who the Messiah was. Even though my destiny, my purpose is to reveal the Messiah to Israel. He says, I am a voice in the wilderness. I am the voice of one in the wilderness, crying in the wilderness, make straight the path of the Lord. His assignment was to come and reveal the Messiah to Israel. But the only way he was going to be able to identify the Messiah was through the, the, the system of baptism, okay? So that does not mean that baptism by immersion was the, the, the divine agenda of heaven for mankind. No! It was John's assignment precisely to use that method to reveal who the Messiah was in Israel. So John confesses in the book of that's John the Baptist speaking in the book of John chapter 1 verse 31. He says, I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Verse 32, then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. 33 says, and I myself did not know him. This is John confessing the mystery of his baptism. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me, because John was a man sent from heaven, the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will now baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I delve into this message properly. Okay? John the Baptist explains the reason behind the concept of baptism and why he came forth baptizing by immersion in water. His life's mandate and purpose was to reveal the Messiah to Israel and the strategy given to him from heaven on how he would recognize the Messiah was through the baptism by immersion in water. You must understand something, child of God. The concept of baptism had been in the heart of the Father even long before John the Baptist showed up. The concept of baptism, the baptism of the Spirit of God, the idea of baptism had been in the mind of God even long before John the Baptist showed up. Long before he showed up. The mystery of baptism, because it's a, it's a mystery. The mystery of baptism is a strategic design by God to save the world since after the fall of Adam. When Adam fell, what Adam lost when he fell was the fellowship of the Spirit. And the only way by which men can be saved is through the baptism. The reunion of mankind with the Spirit is the only way by which men can be saved. So Jesus came to die. All that Jesus came to do was to restore, restore, restore the baptism of the Spirit to mankind. So God's intent and original desire is for all men to be baptized by His Spirit. And not with water by immersion. So someone might be asking me, uh, why then was John the Baptist still, you know, baptizing people even after he he he, he revealed the Messiah? Because if you read your Bible, we you discover that even after Jesus had been re revealed to Israel, John the Baptist kept on baptizing people. And you are wondering, and I'm asking a question, John, you came baptizing. So that the Messiah may be revealed. Now the Messiah is revealed. Why are you still baptizing? Somebody say tradition. Culture. I want you to repeat after me. Tradition. Culture is a barrier to the move of the Spirit. Tradition and culture is a barrier to the move of the Spirit. 
John the Baptist made baptism a culture and a tradition. Meanwhile, it was an assignment to reveal the Messiah. It was not a concept for mankind. John chapter 4 verse 1. Let me show you something quickly. John chapter 4 and verse 1. Are you blessed somebody? Are you blessed somebody? If you are blessed, type blessed. Type blessed. Type blessed. John chapter 4 and verse 1. I'll show you a mystery. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Watch this. Although, verse 2 says, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. Wow. It was not Jesus who baptized. So Jesus did not baptize anybody with water. Why? Because his assignment was to baptize men with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. Join with me quickly. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. John speaking. John says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, than I am, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Men ought to be baptized in the Spirit of God. And water baptism by immersion does not guarantee the baptism of the Spirit of God. You know, something mysterious happened in the Bible. You know, God kept trying to reveal to, 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 the, to, the, to the apostles before now that, you know, they don't need water baptism by immersion, but they were not catching it. Tradition held these guys bound. Tradition, God taught. Now so did the drum, now so did the drum. Always hinders the move of God. You must be sensitive to what God is doing per time. The revelations of God are progressive. You must be in tune with the Spirit. You must be sensitive to the stirring of the waters and the move of the Spirit. John kept saying, I must decrease that he must increase. I must decrease that he might increase. There is one coming after me greater than I am. But when he showed up, John the Baptist still continued his ministry. Meanwhile, his ministry was supposed to stop when the Messiah showed up. Now the Messiah shows up John the Baptist is still doing ministry. Who else are you trying to reveal? Somebody see loss of focus. Somebody see loss of focus. And guess what? His loss of focus landed him in prison. Check out the end of John. Went to prison. After a while, was beheaded. Why? Because he lost touch with the spirit. He lost focus. That's for another day. Let's get back to the mystery of baptism. Back to the mystery of baptism. Now, Jesus in the book of Acts, chapter 1, and verse 4, was speaking to his disciples and he told them something significant. I'm rounding up right now. I'm rounding up right now. Jesus speaking in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1. Somebody say Acts. A C T S. Say Acts. Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. And verse 4. Hallelujah. On one occasion, while he was eating with them so jesus was having a nice time with his disciples they were chilling you know having some shawarma some burger you know jesus is chilling don't worry anywhere jesus is there's supper there was burger there was bones there was zobo there was everything you can think of and while these guys were feasting and feasting and you know separating the flesh of the chicken from the bone left and right marry on marry on marry on jesus began to speak he gave them a command he said do not leave jerusalem but wait for the gift of my father. Wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. What is this gift? Verse 5, Jesus began, began to tell them. For John baptized with water. Okay? But in a few days, what I came for, excuse me, is about to actualize. Okay? The reason I showed up is about to take form. John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
this is the original concept of baptism that men may be baptized with the holy spirit and not immersed in water this is why while peter was speaking to cornelius as peter yet spoke the bible says the spirit descended on the house of cornelius the same thing that happens in the book of Acts, chapter chapter 2 verse 1 why they receive the word of god now let, let, let me make this straight how you get access to the baptism of the spirit is by receiving the word of god when you receive the word of god it gives you a platform to access the baptism of the spirit so when jesus spoke to his disciples and said tarry in jerusalem for the for the for the enjoy of the spirit the disciples accepted the word of jesus they obeyed the instruction they tarried in jerusalem and the result was that in acts chapter 2 verse 1 boom the heavens opened there was an outpouring the spirit descended the disciples were baptized with the spirit so how do you receive the baptism of the spirit having understood what baptism means having having understood the concept behind baptism because only through baptism can men be reunited with god only through the baptism of the spirit can we share and partake in the death burial and the resurrection of our lord jesus christ only through the medium of baptism can men be joined heads with christ through the medium of baptism for if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, he shall mortify, mortify. The same spirit that was in Christ came on the apostles, came on the house of Colinus as they received the word of God. As I, as I preach the word of God now, so another the sound of my voice, receive the baptism of the spirit in the name of Jesus. I give you a few nuggets now the story about paul uh, about peter preaching to colinos and then the spirit you know descended in the house of colinos and everybody was filled with the spirit and they started speaking in tongues and peter was surprised peter was surprised because all it takes to be baptized by the spirit of god is the acceptance of the word of god now what is the word of god the word of god is a mystery the word of god is a person the word of God is the person of Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was, be- was with God, and the word was God. The word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through him, and nothing that was made was made without him. Who is the word of God? The word of God is Jesus. So receiving Jesus into your life is the platform to gain access to the baptism of the Spirit. In this time and day in which we live in, men will suffer losses if they are not under the, the, the influence of the baptism of the Spirit. There will be calamities, chaos, all sort of troubles that will, over, that will overwhelm men. Issues that money cannot solve. Only those who are under the influence of the baptism of the Spirit will be survivors. Follow me closely. As I give you a few nuggets from, to, from tonight's teaching. When heaven decides, I want you to write this down. Write this down. Write this down. I got this from the secret place of fellowship with God. When heaven decides to lift a man, they validate and mandate the baptism of the Holy Spirit on such a man. Heaven approves the baptism of the Spirit on such a man when heaven is set to lift a man, number one. Number two, the baptism of the Spirit is the symbolic authentication of the reunion between man and God's spirit, which is our predestined state of existence. I'll take that again. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the symbolic authentication of the reunion between man and God's spirit, which is our predestined state of existence we were predestined to exist as co gods on earth as fellow heads of christ we were born to be gods on earth and the baptism of the spirit enforces the nature of god in us now we can rule over god's creation like he gave us that mandate in genesis because of the baptism of the spirit Paul understood the importance of the baptism of the Spirit and the revelation of it. That's why Paul began to make statements like, In Him, we live and move and have our being. In Him, immersed in Him, lost in Him. 
baptized in him, we live. Because there's fullness of life in him. He's a life-giving spirit. And move and have our being. Catch this right now. Are you with me, somebody? Just the same way the spirit of God brooded upon the face of the deep in Genesis. You remember that scripture? And the spirit moved upon the face of the deep. The spirit hovered on the face of the deep. The same way the spirit hovered on the face of the deep because of the operations of darkness in Genesis is the exact same way God's spirit wants to hover over the lives of men. God's spirit wants to brood over the lives of mortal men. The same way the spirit longs to brood over the lives of men. To influence them with his divine abilities and nature. Thereby making them fellow joint heirs with Christ and guaranteeing their inheritance. The Spirit wants to brood upon your life to validate your sonship, making you joint heirs with Christ, guaranteeing your inheritance. You have an inheritance. The world is your parish. You have an inheritance. And only by the Spirit can you gain access to this inheritance. Follow me closely. It is those who are led by the Spirit of God that are the sons of God. It is those who are led by the Spirit of God that are the sons of God. Follow me closely. And you cannot be led by someone who does not influence you. That is why the Spirit longs to brood upon us so that He can influence us with God's abilities and nature, the nature of obedience, the nature of yielding to fellowship. That way you can be led and you can operate as a son. Let me tell you the truth. Sons of God don't lack. Sons of God don't experience calamity. They overcome every trial and temptation that comes their way. Every son of God has a guaranteed victory. It doesn't matter what life throws at you. As long as you function under the canopy of those who are, who are classified as the sons of God, you are bound to overcome. I see someone overcoming tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray for someone on the sound of my voice. Receive the baptism of the Spirit and, and, and access the ability to overcome. Quickly, note this down. It is the divine will of God that all men be baptized with the Spirit. It is the divine will of God. God wants every man on the surface of the earth, every boy and girl, every man, woman, to be baptized with his Spirit. Every man. Quickly as a roundup, what are the effects of the baptism of the Spirit? What are the effects? What are the products of the baptism of the Spirit? What happens to me after I have been baptized by the Spirit? Number one. You get instructions and directions from God. Your spiritual antenna is activated. You have signs into Zion. You can access the decree from Zion. You can peek into the agenda of God. You hear a voice saying to you, go in this way. You gain access to instructions and directions from God. Number two, what are the effects of baptism? You gain insight into the deep things of the Spirit of God. For no man knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. You gain insight into the deep things of the Spirit. The Spirit is deep. And only those who are baptized by the Spirit of God can have access into the deep things of the Spirit of God. Number three, the effect of the baptism of the Spirit causes you to harness potentials and abilities locked up on inside of you. Many people don't know that the Spirit of God is the Spirit of creativity. Oh, I'll say that again. Many people don't know that the Spirit of God is the Spirit of creativity. There are so many things that are yet to be invented because people have, people have not tapped into the potentials of the Spirit locked up in them. A lot. A lot. For in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We are in the last days. There is going to be a massive baptism of the spirit. Because God is saying, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Kobas. Legizo Zabrande, Niko Sapalia, Vendo Hoskabada Histazis, Jatelo Karuba Haske Zatomai, Ekala Higazis Tapaya. Receive the baptism of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. You harness potentials and abilities locked up on inside of you. 
if you're an engineer, uncommon ideas begin to hit your mind. You are into the, you are, you are, you are into the field of medicine. Solutions begin to come to your spirit. It doesn't matter what aspect of life you're, you're functioning in. The spirit of God unlocks the potentials buried on the inside of you. You begin to function in high capacity. Unusual mind, sharp mindset. You pick things. You tap into unseen realms. You invent things that are yet to be seen. God positions you at the, at the strategic tail end of your career. The effect of the baptism of the Spirit is that it causes you to harness, bring out locked up potentials on the inside of you. Number four. Okay, I'll leave that for next week. Okay. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I want you to understand that you cannot access the baptism of the Spirit except you are born again. You must be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The only way which we assess, assess the, the baptism of the Spirit, which is a necessary, a necessary credential for our function on the surface of the earth, is by giving our life to Jesus Christ. Like I said earlier, you must receive the word of God. And the word of God is a person. The word of God is Jesus specified. If you're watching me tonight, from any, any part of the world, you're saying, hey, young man, I want to experience the baptism of the Spirit. I want to function in my high capacity. I want to receive the life of Christ. I need this. I want you to say this prayer with me. And your life is about to be transformed. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe that you died for me. You were buried and you rose again and you were ascended into, and you ascended into heaven for my justification. I receive all that you did for me on the cross of Calvary into my human spirit. I receive your life into my human spirit. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are the son of God. And I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord of my life. Come and live and reign and rule in my life. I receive your life into my human spirit. Thank you, Father, for saving me in Jesus' name. If you said this prayer with me, I want to announce to you that you are born again and you have gained access into the life of the Spirit of God. Now a transformation is taking place in your spirit. And if you said this prayer with me, I want you to hit me up on my DM. Send me a message. Tell me I said this prayer. I want you to, so that I can follow you up onto discipleship. Because you need to be discipled. You need to be taught the things of God after you have received the life of God. So if you said this prayer, I'm glad to announce you that heaven is rejoicing right now because you are born again. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Now, hit me up in my DM. Let me know that you said this prayer. And I'll take it on from there onto the side so god bless you join me same time same station next week for another exciting time in god's presence remember we are dealing on the mystery of baptism i have a lot more to share with you on the benefits of baptism and a lot more it's going to be getting more interesting as the lord leads me on this thank you for joining in tonight god bless you god bless you i'll see you some other time bye now